Hey, uh, great to hear uh, that get invite uh, from you, Rachel. And it was great to listen to all of what Ollie had to say, uh, said, which, which was very refreshing. Um, it is the case, as he said, that, you know, the sort of things that DPD are doing, in particular on monitors, are particularly important in raising the amount of information that's out there to keep the political pressure on from the public to drive forward to get cleaner air. Um, I'm sure people will know that, you know, the latest estimates of... Um, deaths each year are in the region of 64,000 premature deaths in Britain alone. Obviously, it's something like 7 million globally at a cost of something like 20 billion pounds a year to the economy and to the health service. So we do need to uh, sort this out. People will also know that air pollution essentially attacks, uh, makes people older uh, by attacking your lungs, your heart, your minds. So primarily we're talking about lung disease, heart disease, strokes and the like, but it also affects unborn babies, smaller particulates getting into the bloodstream, affects the mental health of uh, young children and older children. Of course, uh, dementia is affected as well. Um, it, I think everyone will, will be aware of the coroner's report at the end of last year for Ella Kissimi. Uh, Kissy Deborah, who's a nine-year-old girl who died after going to hospital 28 times in just three years for asthma, it, basically induced by um, air pollution. And uh, I visited the uh, George Eustace Environment Secretary with, with her mother to press that the Environment Bill, which is still going through Parliament, uh, has specific World Health Organization air quality enforceable limits in them, in it rather, and indeed, uh, there's, no, there's a part of the bill that to ensure that all our government departments work together to improve air quality, because DEFRA, of course, doesn't build the roads or set the, the duties. Um, this is quite a complicated scientific area. Of course, the uh, World Health Organization limits uh, required would be 10 micrograms, or should be required, a 10 micrograms per cubic meter by 2030. Uh, Ollie mentioned different sorts of particulates. It's slightly confusing because obviously diesel particulates are more toxic than those from tires. Uh, but we do need to drive forward, and the government's already agreed that we should end. We should have all the new vehicles would be um, non-diesel fossil fuel by 2030. Uh, and I agree with Ollie that we should be looking in this current budget as well as further incentives to drive forward. In particular, you know, people who've got less money to switch more quickly, uh, including vans, of course, uh, towards um, electric vehicles. And we should also look at sort of the issue around indoor air quality. Now how that mixes up with outdoor air quality. You mentioned as well the issue of children. It's important that children are safe inside the school in terms of in, indoor air quality and outside to basically stop loitering and idling. And, and again, overall, as we emerge out of COVID, uh, you know, I welcome people working a bit more from home, but we really do need to electrify our whole uh, transport system. So um, I think uh, DVD is uh, taking major leadership here. I welcome that and would encourage that sort of activity across the industrial sector. Yeah, my background's in, in large companies as well, as well as starting small companies. And clearly companies are looking to the future in terms of the costs and benefits of investing in a greener future. And I hope that together with the public awareness from greater monitoring outside schools uh, through vehicles themselves, et cetera, will put pressure to a faster change. So thank you so much.